Hello, this is Professor Kitch, and this webcast is designed to give you a quick overview of our graduate program in Geotechnical Engineering here at Cal Poly Pomona. When you're done with this webcast, uh, you should be able to understand and describe the structure of our program, know where to find out the information uh, that you need and the forms you need online, uh, know how we schedule courses and what our course offerings are, and then how to create your own program plan. So I first would like to start by explaining a little bit of the characteristics of our program. And our program is designed uh, as an advanced degree for pra practicing professionals. Uh, we understand that most of our students in this program will be full-time employees and doing this part-time. And there's two parts uh, that that affects. One, it offers uh, how we uh, administrate the program and when the courses are offered, and also the type of courses that we offer. Um, we like to think of our program as theoretically based, but with a very strong practice orientation. So that's what makes us different than other programs in the area. Um, I think it's really important at this point to point out that to be a, a complete professional, there's uh, education requires uh, uh, two kinds of work. One is academic study, which is what we're uh, providing, and the second one is practical experience. We know, for example, to be a registered uh, professional engineer or a professional geotechnical engineer in California, there's a practice requirement. And so what we're going to concentrate on in this, uh, in our program here, is making sure that we give you this practical academic experience. Uh, it's very practice oriented, but we understand that a lot of the work that you're going to need to be, become a practicing professional is going to be learned on the job. And obviously, we're not going to be covering the on-the-job stuff in class. So now I'd like to cover the program structure a little bit with you. Um, the master's program here is a total of 45 units, which is uh, 12 classes. And it's broken into uh, both uh, required classes and electives. And the required classes are kind of broken into two, two categories. This first group of the 530 sequence, which is CE 531, 32, and 33, are our main introductory classes. Uh, 531 and 532 are an advanced soil mechanics class. Uh, and then 533 is a laboratory class. And those aren't prerequisites for all of the, the graduate classes in our program, but they're prerequisites for a number of them. Then there's another group of support classes, but they're also required, and that's this group, the uh, probability uh, class. Uh, geotechnical engineering is a highly uncertain business, and we think understanding uh, probability theory is important to that. Uh, an engineering geology class, which is an undergraduate class, uh, but this is a second level, 400 level ge engineering geology class. Um, that class does have a prerequisite of having had an introductory ge geology class. So if you've never had an introductory geology class, you will have to find a uh, way to take that class too. And then finally, the research methods class, which I'll talk about later. So these are the required classes. In addition to the required classes, there are elective courses, and these are all the design courses in the program, which you can see the titles of there. And you'll be taking either 16 or 20 units of technical electives, and that depends on whether you're doing a project or a thesis. Our program requires a culminating experience. It's either a project or a thesis. We'll give a chance to explain more about the difference between those later as you set up your program. But the project is four units. And if you're taking a project for four units, then you're going to need 20 units of technical electives to make up your total of 45 units. Or if you're doing a thesis, then that's eight units. And then you need 16 units of technical electives, again, to make up the 45 units total. Well, the vast majority of our students end up doing a project. Uh, we've only had a few students doing a thesis. Now I'd like to show you a little bit about how the courses are scheduled because it's really important to setting up your program. And so here I've outlined all the courses and when they're offered. And they, the top are the uh, required courses in the uh, brown background and the lower part in the green background are the elective courses. And what I, what's really important to point out here is when these courses are offered. So here in the red boxes you're going to see that all these courses are offered every year. In fact some of them, like the research method class, and the, the undergraduate foundation engineering class are offered uh, more than one time a year. But these classes are offered every year, so you can take them uh, any year that you want, which is opposed to these courses that are in the yellow boxes, which is most of our technical electives, plus one of our required classes, which is the engineering geology class. These are only offered every other year. And so that is really important to understand when you're setting up your program. 
You have the, the, most of the required classes are offered every year, and the technical electives are offered every other year. And what this leads to is that there's two basic plans that you can set up. There's really uh, either a three-year plan or a two-year plan, which you can use to set up uh, your program. Now, if you're doing a three-year plan, which is typically what most of our students do, most of our students are graduating in about three years, you're essentially taking mostly only one class per quarter. So the first year, you're going to be taking CE 531, 532, and 533. And then the second year, you're going to be taking a combinations of technical electives and your other required classes, CE 502, the geology class, and then uh, one technical elective. And then someplace in this year, you're going to have to squeeze in one technical elective. And notice in this three-year plan, you're basically just taking one class per quarter. So the first year, you're going to be taking these required courses, plus one technical elective. It'll be one quarter where you have to take two classes. And then your final year, you're going to be finishing up your technical electives, and then you're going to be taking your research methods class, CE 690, plus you're going to be taking your project or your thesis over two quarters. Even if you're doing a, a project or a thesis, it always takes two quarters to do it. So that's the basic three-year plan, where you're, you're, in general, you're taking one class per quarter, with the exception of having to add, uh, at one point, at least one technical elective in uh, this sometime in the first two years. And then in the last year, you'll be taking one more academic class a quarter, plus you'll be doing your, th your project work. The other way to set the program up is the two-year plan. And the thing that is key to understand in the two-year plan is in the two-year plan, you're going to have to take two classes every quarter in order to get done. And because this sequence, CE 531, 532, and 533, are offered every fall, winter, and spring, uh, it's critical that you actually take tech electives this first year because if you if you in the first year you if you decide well you know I'm not sure if I want to do this in two or three years I'm just going to take one class right now well this next year in the fall CE 531 is going to be one of the classes that's taught and there may or may not be uh, two technical electives available for you to take so it's really critical if you're on this two-year plan that you immediately start taking two classes per term so the first year. You're going to be taking CE 531, 532, 533, and then you're going to be taking a second class, uh, which is uh, one technical elective or, or one of your required classes, such as uh, CE 502. And then the second year, you'll be taking two technical electives for, for, for one quarter, um, and you're going to take 690, and then the second quarter, you're going to be taking uh, your project classes. So the big deal here is if you want to do it in two years, you need to be taking two classes every quarter, and you need to start immediately doing that because the second year there may or may not be two classes, two technical electives per quarter that you can take because of the way this CE 531, 532, and 533 are offered every year. Now I'd like to take a minute to talk about um, how much work it is to complete this program because it's pretty important. I'd like to first point out that a full-time grad program is about 12 units in our, in our program, or three classes. And that's easily 40 to 60 hours of work per week. So if you're taking two classes, that's easily uh, I would say 30 to 50 hours per week of work. Now if you add to that the work that you're already doing, and if you're working full time, you know that you're putting in 40 to 50 hours per week to get your work done. So that's, you know, we're talking a total here like 70 to 90 hours per week. Okay, now you can do that. But that better be the only thing that you're doing right now. You know, that's going to interfere with all the rest of your life, including your family life, your fun, and everything else. Uh, and we certainly have students that do take two classes a, a quarter. But I just want you to understand the amount of work that that is. Um, so that's re the reason that most of our students end, end up basically taking one class per quarter. Because this generates something like 60 hours a week of, of work. Uh, for both their work, this is work plus class, and I mean your employment work plus class, which is a, a manageable amount of time. So if you're going to go into the 
three the two year plan and you're taking two in the two year plan here and you're taking two units uh, I mean sorry two classes per quarter just realize how much work that is and make sure that you're set up to be able to, to do that well so finally I'd want to cover a couple other technical electives that are available we've listed the main ones but there are some other ones there's a solid and hazardous waste engineering class that's offered in our environmental program. That's a, they cover landfills and other things that are appropriate uh, for geotechnical engineers. Our geology department has a number of undergraduate and graduate classes that are available. I've listed some of them here. That's something you can check into. And you can take courses at other universities. We allow you two or three courses you can take at other universities. We have, for example, had students go to UCLA to take a numerical methods and geotechnical engineering course. And certainly you can take some online courses from other universities if that's what you want to do. So there are some ways to get your technical elective in, in other than in our program. So what do you need to do this quarter? Well, the first thing is to decide whether you're going to be on the two or the three year plan. And as I said, if you're on a two year plan, you need to have two classes every quarter. You then need to review the planned course offering schedule, which is on the CE homepage, and the draft program plan on the same homepage. And I'll show you these now. So from the CE homepage, you'll find the information under the MSCE program tab on the left. And if you click that tab, and if you scroll down, you'll find all the information about the geotechnical engineering program from this link. And here on this page, you'll see both the course outlines, which we just discussed earlier. And finally, uh, down in this program of study, you'll find one is a link to the schedule plan course offerings, which I've already shown you once, but that's it right there. And you'll also find a link to your program plan, which is right here. And this is the form that you'll have to fill out. And basically on this form, you're going to identify the required courses up in this block right here that you have to take and below that you're going to enter the courses that you plan to take for your particular program. Then once you've filled out your program plan you need to visit your advisor and these are your advisors they're listed by the la first letter of your last name and turn that plan into your advisor by the end of the third week of the quarter. Once you've selected a thesis advisor, that person will be your academic advisor. And the thesis advisor will depend on the topic you pick and may or may not be your current academic advisor. Well, I hope this webcast has given you a good overview of how our MSc program works here at Cal Poly Pomona. If you have any other questions, uh, please contact your academic advisor. You can find their contact name from the CEO page. And we look forward to seeing you in our program.